Can this tiny $2 microcontroller be turned into a standalone personal computer and gaming machine or is this a bit over the top? I love to squeeze out maximum performance on limited systems and in this video I am going to make an Arduino Nano display 40 by 25 characters on a VGA monitor by using just two logic ICs. With another two logic ICs it'll read out a PS2 keyboard along the way. And our little friend will have plenty of processing power left to be a really enjoyable machine. If that looks like an interesting project, let's go and build it step by step. First I'll be taking a look at the relevant output signals of our Arduino with my PC scope. And then I'll build the VGA and PS2 circuits on a breadboard. Then we can have some fun playing Tetris and programming our new nano computer. In case you want to learn more about VGA signals in general, I recommend checking out my introductory Arduino VGA videos here on this channel. Ok, as a first step we need to make the processor output its 16 MHz system clock here on uh, pin D8. We'll be using it to drive pixel data to the monitor. Let me hook up my PC scope and take a look. Ok, right now we can't see anything. We need to edit one of the processor's fuse bytes. Open the explorer and navigate to the Arduino installation. Mine is at program x86 um, Arduino and click on hardware, Arduino, AVR and open the file boards.txt. Scroll down to the nano section and change the low fuse byte from hexadecimal FF to hexadecimal BF and save again. Now I'm using another Arduino Nano as an ISP to write these changes into our target here. I'll connect 5 volts and ground and pin 13 to 13, 12 to 12, 11 to 11 and pin 10 to the target's reset pin here. Now fire up the Arduino IDE and upload the example sketch Arduino ISP to the programmer. Ok, that's done. Now select Tools, Programmer, Arduino as ISP and make sure to select Board, Arduino Nano to identify our target device and hit Tools, Burn Bootloader. And there we have our clock signal. Now we can disconnect all this stuff and upload my nano PC test sketch into our target. More on that later. Let's see what other signals the nano now generates. There we have the 16 MHz clock again on pin D8. On pin D10 there should be the vertical sync pulse 60 times per second. Ah, there it is. That's every 16 milliseconds. The horizontal zinc pulse is on pin D12 every 32 microseconds at the start of each scan line. Alright, the actual stream of pixel data will flow through this 74HC165 parallel in serial out shift register. Every 8 clock cycles the nano needs to load it with a new byte. For this task the nano generates a 1 MHz load signal on D11. Let's take a look. Ah, there it is. Here's the pinout of the 165. We can connect the 8 data inputs D0 to D7 straight over to the Arduino's port D. But what about the parallel load signal PL? We need short active low pulses every 8 clock cycles here, that is every 500 nanoseconds. Not that toggling 1 MHz signal. But that's not a big deal. 
Let me use three of these XOR gates of this 74HC86 in a row to invert and delay this signal a bit. I'll wire the B inputs of the XORs to 5 volts, so they effectively work as inverters. Ok, let's take a look at the new signal now. Now that looks promising. If we now send both signals into our leftover XOR here, its output will only be low if both signals are the same. Let's take a look. And yes, there we have our load pulse every 500 nanoseconds. The bandwidth of my scope is a bit limited. Mm, let me try and improve the settings a bit. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. Hmm, I think we are ready to hook up the shift register and our VGA output should be up and running. Now that I've connected everything, it's time for a test. It's always a good idea to stabilize the supply voltage with 100 nanofarad ceramic and some electrolytic caps. And yeah, that looks nice and stable. And this is how I wired the signals H-Sync, V-Sync and signal to the VGA connector. Okay. I think now it's time to look at the signal's clock and data from a PS2 keyboard here. I've made my keyboard breadboard compatible, but you can find a proper connector online if you are more patient than I am. Anyway, here's the pinout. Let me hook up my scope again. So that's clock and in red that should be the signal. All right. That looks pretty standard. We have a low start bit, 8 data bits, a parity bit and a high stop bit. Let's read this data in by using two of these serial in parallel out shift registers. We can use two of these 74HC164 in series for the job. Each can hold only 8 bits at a time. Here is the pinout. We can hook the keyboard's clock pin to pin 8 and the data line to pin 1. The data is shifted in via Q0 to Q7. Please note that I'll be connecting the Q7 pin of the first chip to the DSA input of the second to cascade them. Ok, let's disconnect power and hook everything up.
Okay, let's connect power again. And let's not forget using some 100 nanofarads capacitor. Okay, the data is flowing in from Q0 to Q7 and over to the next IC into Q0 again. And we are shifting in 11 bits. So mm, let me hook up some LEDs to see if we can receive something. So the most significant bit is coming in last. So that's going to go to Q0 and so forth. So let's see if we can receive something here. I'm pressing an A on the keyboard and yes, yeah, that's a 28, a zero start bit and a high stop bit. Let's try out the B. Oh, that's not working. Hmm, I think I forgot to connect the master reset. So let's try that. Let's tie it high for now. And let me press an A again. Okay, there we have 28, B, C, D, E. Yeah, that's that's working now. That's great. So whenever we have an even number of LEDs here, the parity bit sort of lights up. Whenever I press a key, you might have noticed the LEDs flickering. That's because the data is sort of shifted in. But we'll be able to sample that with the Arduino. We'll only be using the yellow data bits so I'll disconnect the start, the stop bit and the parity bit. Alright, let's hook it up to the Arduino now. Sorry for blocking the camera's view here with my hands. But as you can see I'm hooking up six of the eight data bits to the free inputs A0 to A5 of the Arduino. For two bits however, we will have to reuse pins D6 and D7. Let's connect our two keyboard data bits to these pins using 220 ohms resistors each. That way we won't short out uh, our pixel data and in the meantime we can use the pins as inputs. So now we should be able to get some data in, but we also need to clear the register with a reset line. That's coming from pin D9. Okay, let's try out everything together now. All right, that seems to work. That looks great. But so far we haven't taken a look at the software side and that's where things get a bit tricky. I won't go into details here. If you are interested, take a look at the source code. As always, the link is in the video description. Instead, what I want to show next is how convenient it is to actually use this little system. Once you have downloaded my header library called os.h, just navigate to the folder where your Arduino sketches live. There should already be a subfolder named libraries. In there, make a folder called os and put the file os.h inside, like you see here. That way the Arduino IDE will be able to access it. Now we open up a new Arduino sketch and simply include the header library os.h in the first line here. And just like that we have the following built-in variables and functions available. Within the namespace os we can access the video RAM array, a frame counter, we can write text to the screen or fill the screen or scroll the screen one line up and read in keystrokes. Okay, so let's write a simple hello world program now. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's add a bit of animation here and write random characters to the screen. I'm using the random function here. Uh, 
All right, that was pretty fast. Time to run some games, I guess. As some of you might know, my go-to Zen exercise on a new system is coding Tetris. Let's upload my sketch and have a look. It was really convenient to write this in C rather than in assembly. And yes, it's Tetris again, running on a $2 CPU. So that about wraps it up for the Nano PC. Thank you for following along. I'd love to hear about your cool ideas or projects running on this little standalone personal computer. Please subscribe to my channel if you think I've earned it and have a good day. Take care. Bye.